All right, so for number eight, we have that at Springle University, the weights in kilograms of 10 chinchilla rabbits and 10 sable rabbits were recorded. The aim, hmm, important that the aim was to find out whether chinchilla rabbits are generally heavier than sable rabbits, and the results obtained are summarized in the following table that is, well, it's right there, see? So, a t-test, keyword t-test, is performed at the 5% significance level. So, everything I put in yellow is what is important here. Those are the buzzwords. For part A, we need to write down the null and alternative hypotheses. So, the intuition, okay, for null and alternative hypotheses is, well, first of all, HO is null, see? And your HO is usually going to be the not version of your H1, see? So your HO is going to be your not version of your H1. HO is null. H1 is alternative. Okay. And so your, what the heck is your H1? So your H1, your alternative hypothesis, tends to be what you're trying to find out. Ah, what you're trying to find out. Look at that. So what I'm trying to find out in this case is whether, whether chinchilla rabbits are generally heavier than sable rabbits. So in fancy math language, I'd say something like mean weight chinchilla has to be greater than a mean weight rabbit see and so that would mean by h1 the not version of that would be that the, the mean weights are just like equal see now just to be a little more consistent with how this tends to show up the mean weight of the chinchilla, we are going to call it UC. The U is for like the mean sign, ¿cierto? And the mean weight of the rabbit, we will call it UR, see? And so my H1, I can actually write it as UC is greater than UR. And my HO is going to be that UC is equal to you are see so that is for part a for my null hypothesis and my alternative hypothesis now moving on for part b we need to find the p-value for this test so first things first we open up our trusty rusty uh calculator here ¿cierto? and what we're gonna do is go to stat because we are looking at a statistics problem go to edit and put all of our data here see and so I already did this beforehand, but essentially this guy here is going to be L1 and this guy here is going to be L2, see? So L1 is chinchilla. Let's not forget what we're doing here. And L2 is going to be rabbit, see? So now we have our, our stuff here and they asked us, or we are told that this is done with a t-test, see? Key buzzword that I highlighted earlier. So my t-test, if I go again to stat, over to tests i have the t test here on the second one see however if i click here i notice that i only have one list see i have list l1 and right now i have two lists right so that is a big hint that i need to go to the two sample t test how do you know that it's two sample t test well because i have two lists right here and intuitively i'd say you're dealing with rabbits sorry you're dealing with chinchilla with chinchillas and sables so that makes two different populations that's going to make it a two sample t-test see so you put l1 l2 here on this row it's asking like for the hypotheses see so here you actually want to put like the alternative hypotheses it's like depending on these three signs that you pick it's either doing u1 does not equal u2 u1 is greater than uh, U2 or U1 is less than U2, see? And so we need to not forget our north. In our scenario, L1 in our calculator is chinchilla, ¿cierto? And here we're saying that chinchilla has a greater mean. And so if I open up over here, the version where U1 is greater than U2 is this last one here, see? Awesome. Last but not least, we go to the pooled section. And so pooled makes, re makes reference to if the lists are taking data from the same population, see? And so although they are both being taken from rabbits, they are not being taken from 
the same type of rabbit, see? So in this case, we're gonna put pooled, yes. Because they are separate populations, see? Go ahead and calculate. These are the values that we get. And so for part B, that's literally all you have to do, see? Part B, you put it all into your calculator and you say that your p-value is da, 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 0 0.0408, see? If you're worried about showing your process, you literally have to say, this is L1, this is L2, uh, stat, test, two sample t-test, see? So if you write that out, that counts as showing your work, see? Anyways, that is for part B. Now for part C, they ask us to find or write down the conclusion to the test and give a reason for the answer. This unfortunately is one of those things that you just kind of have to memorize, but if you do it enough times, it'll enter your brain. So that is a good sign here. What we need to compare and when we reach the state of concluding a test is the p-value and the significance level. So my p-value, we got it for part B, it's here. See, 0 0.0408 and the significance level is 5%, see? So what is 5% in decimal? 0 0.05. Remember that one is 100%, see? If you remember that one is 100% and that 0.5 is 50%, you should be able to figure out the rest very intuitively. 0 0.05 is 5%, see? Anyways, the case is that my p-value is less than my significance level. And whenever that happens, we reject H0. All right. I suggest that you always look at it from the perspective of H0, just because you have to memorize it and might as well do it one way or another. Another way you can think about it is that this means that we accept H1, see? But in practice, we always talk about rejecting or accepting H0 specifically, but A, whatever floats your boat, see? So what you gotta do is memorize this, that if Whenever your p-value is less than your significance level, you reject the HO. If I want to get really, really fancy with it, I would say that 0 0.0408 is less than 0 0.05. That makes me reject, see? We reject HO. Anyways, that is number eight. I hope it helped.